Hi, it's Steven here for Bland Designs, and today I'm going to do the Mission Inspiration Challenge by Mike Deacon for September 2016. And here's uh, Mike's prompts for this page. There are 10 of them. First of all, he says cover your page with face fragments. Uh, number two, add thin layers of colored paint. Three, stamp text or patterns over your page. Four, add journaling, quote, or phrase. Five, make marks with paint, inks, or sprays. Six, add a focal image. Seven, add washi tape or strips of pattern paper. Eight, add color through a stencil. Nine, add doodles, scribbles, or zantangles. And number 10, finish with a white border. So I've already assembled a few of the things that I think I might, might want to use with this. Um, I'm using the idea of um, face fragments as a theme. Um, I've come up with a quote, beauty is only skin deep. I don't know if I'm going to use this guy or not. This is one of Mike Deacon's uh, purchasable and then printable um, figures that he has on his website. And if you haven't checked out his website, uh, his store, it's great for this kind of collage kind of items and they're very reasonably priced. Um, one and a half pounds for about three or four different sheets. It's about three bucks Canadian. Um, so that's not bad at all. And so I, this intrigues me. I don't know. I might use it. I might not. Um, I found this in a magazine and I scanned it and shrunk it down. I thought that might make a good focal image. I've got some rubber stamps with faces on them. Uh, they're ones by Dina Wakely. And I've got a, another stencil here. And I think this might be a Dina Wakely as well, but I'm not really sure. Um, so and some washi tape. I just grabbed some stuff I thought might go with it. So I've got the beginnings here and whether I use any of this or some of it or all of it, time will tell. So let's get started. I'm going to do this in my round journal and I've already got my uh, page already pre-gessoed. So I guess I'll go to the first step which it says to cover your page with face fragments. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Okay, so the first step says to cover your page with face fragments. So I've got some face fragments here and I'm just going to place them randomly around. Just auditioning them here. I'll keep them all in one one spot. Yeah, sure. So maybe put that down there. Nothing saying I have to have them all facing the same way. And down here, put this one maybe over here. Okay, let's just glue them down. See what happens. Then that. So I'm going to use uh, Distress Collage Medium by Ranger, Tim Holtz's brand, and one of Tim Holtz's brushes. I really like this uh, uh, this matte medium. So get some down here. I'm going to take advantage of the curvature of this picture and the curvature of my page. After that dries, I'll trim the edges from that.
Okay, I'm going to hit this with the heat gun, trim my edges off and clean up my work area and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, number two says add thin layers of colored paint. Okay, thin layers of colored paint. So I've got a lot of skin tones here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a base of the pink first and then I'll dry that and then a second layer very lightly I'm going to rub in a little bit of red sort of a rougey kind of color see what we get and I think I'm going to apply this with oops dropping everything all over the place I think I'm going to apply it with baby wipes and see what happens so first thing is I'm just going to lay down and need to peel that white paint off of that down a little pink on my craft sheet that's probably way too much I had a baby wipe and I'm just going to rub it around and I'm not putting it on very thick I want the faces to show up so I'm really that's what I said I, I put out way too much paint for this Okay, I'm going to hit that with the heat gun for just a few seconds. Okay, that should come up with that. And let's Yes, some of you are going to be very upset with me because I'm going to waste this paint. Yes, I could take a tag or another blank page and smear it on there, but you want to know something? This is kind of cheap paint anyways. I got it on sale and yeah, I'm too lazy. So sue me. Okay, so I've got that spot cleaned up. Now I'm going to take this red just a little bit. There, let's use that amount for now. Maybe that's too little this time. Go from one extreme to the other. Take out a new baby wipe. Tip it in. And let's just rub it in. And I'm not going to so much go over the faces with this. Just maybe along the edges. Uh, yeah, maybe I will go over them. Just lightly. Getting a little texture in here too. Okay, that's enough. Okay, I'm gonna hit this with the heat gun and then we'll come back with the next step. Okay, next step says to stamp text or patterns over your page. So I'd already pre-selected these stamps by Dina Wakely, which have uh, various faces on them. And I'm gonna use this one, which is this one right here. Um, I picked those because we seem to be doing a face theme. And instead of doing it in black, I decided to do it with uh, a colored stays on. This one's uh, claret, so it's kind of a dark reddy browny color. And I'm using stays on because I've got mixed, uh, I've got uh, matte medium on that and paint, and I want this to stick. I wonder if I should use my pad. I think I'll get out my pad. That gives me a better impression. And I'm just make sure I've got lots of pink on that. And let's see. Yeah, that came out okay. I think I'll put another one on. Actually, I think what I might do is kind of do it in a fan pattern to balance off this other side with the faces.
Okay, kind of like that. All right, so that's on there. So I'm gonna hit that with the heat gun just to give it a heat set and clean up a bit here and go on to the next one. Okay, the next part says add journaling quote or phrase. Well, I already have uh, figured out what my phrase is gonna be and that's beauty is only skin deep. And um, I, I printed it out on vellum this time using my, my printer. And one I did with sort of a, a ready pink background and the other one I did just in black, in gray kind of a thing. And I'm thinking which one would look better. You know, I, I might use both of them. Maybe have one overlap the other. Maybe more towards there. Now the only thing is I'm looking ahead here. And it says make marks with paint and there's a focal image supposed to be on here. And so I don't know what, uh, what I should do about placement. So these are what I was thinking as focal images. This one's in black and white. See, there's a bit of a pun happening here, right? Beauty's only skin deep. Uh, yeah. Um, I could use that in here, and then I could actually put my quote right here on top, and it's maybe one over here, or or I could do this one just in black. And I think I like the red. I could do that, but I have this image here as well, so I could put this one, this is much more colorful, it maybe towards the bottom, and then put, hmm, what do I like better? You know, I, I kind of like the, the, the twist on the words using the skull. Save that one for another time, and I think I'm going to use the skull. So I'm going to I'm going to jump a step here. I'm going to add the focal image first, and then I'll put this on. And I think I'll put the focal image right maybe off the page a little bit here. I don't want to cover up those too much, and I want this on here. Sort of like a little pad. Yeah, that would look good right there. So get rid of that one. Oh, no, I may not get rid of that one. I may, I may come back and use the second one, but I'll wait until I put more things on. So I'm just going to put that over to the side for now. Okay, let's get out the matte medium. And I've got my brush sitting over here. Okay, I'm going to grab a paper towel. Let's dry that off a little better. on the top and I think yeah, I'll put some on the back that I hope the ink is not going to run on this. Be very careful because it does look like the ink might smear it did a little bit there but that's all I'm going to do with it. Track it down. Okay, got that stage done. Then we'll come back and do the mark making after I hit this with the heat gun again. Okay, so the next one says make marks with paint, inks, or sprays. So I'm was looking at my stash of rubber stamps, and this is one I haven't used in a long time. It's just a te texture stamp has it on three sides, and 
taking a look at this one kind of reminds me of like wrinkles kind of a thing you know crow's feet and that so i'm going to use archival ink black oh i better get out my stamping mat again i like using the stamping mat because it gives you a better impression when you place your stamp down on it so get this nice and inked up and let's just try something there There. And let's just snap off over here. Snap off. Okay, that's enough. Stop while I'm ahead. Okay, now the next one was to add the focal image. I've done that already. And now it's just to add washi tape or strips of patterned paper. Well, I got out my washi tape because I don't use my washi tape very much. So I thought this will force me to use it. And I don't know, I picked out some darker. This one's kind of different. Use strips of it so. Across here, and maybe I'll overlap it with this one if I can find the edge of this. That was pretty bold. Let's see. Well, one thing about washi tape, if you don't like it, you can pull it back up and see what you Maybe overlap. This one because it'll show through. I don't really need that anymore. Put some How's that? Hmm. Not sure if I'm liking that or not. I wonder if I should put some. Stark. So maybe what I'll do is just put the washi tape over top. And now I have a big mess of washi tape all over it. But that looks like it's blending in a little bit better. Yeah, that makes that blend in a little bit better. Do I want to put any more anywhere else? No, 
I'm just going to leave it like, oh, should I put a little up here at the top? says add color through a stencil okay and I'm also looking ahead to the last step it says finish with a white border and I'm thinking this is getting a little dark and I'd like to lighten it up so and I also like to add a little bit more texture to it and this area in here is bothering me so I think I'm gonna break it up I'm gonna use this stencil which I pulled out in advance it's got these faces on it and I think I'm gonna use my texture paste and although it says add colored, well, I'm going to add white. Um, I'll see that. If I might, after this dries, might add a little color to this on top with something. I've got an idea in the back of my head, but we'll see how this works. So, this is my repositionable spray. I always like to use this on my stencils to hold them in place. So I'm just going to do this off camera. It just gives my... Uh, Let's me get underneath the nooks and crannies. So I'm going to use this face up here. Actually, so I maybe I'll use these two faces instead. No, I'll just start with one. Lay this down right there. Put out my texture paste, and I'm using the Ranger texture paste for this. I like this because you can apply your heat gun to it, and it doesn't bubble up. Some modeling and texture cases will level up when you apply heat. Let's put this on. Now, I'm not sure how thick I should go. Maybe not too thick. So I'm going to have to dry it, but I'm thinking that I might put another one of these. I don't know if I'll use the same one or not, but I'll do a set of three. So they kind of overlap in this, right in this area here. Yeah, but I think what I'm going to have to do is hit it with a heat gun first. Okay, at this point, I think I'm going to add uh, that other text piece quote that I had. Um, and I think I'm just going to put it down here. But this time, I think what I'm going to do, instead of using the matte medium, because it kind of bled uh, on the printout on the first one, I think I'm just going to use a collage stick. This is uh, the Ranger collage glue stick. Oops, throw it around, why don't I? Sure. That's got that. Now, second last step says add doodle, scribbles, or zantangle. Okay. I had this idea of, of using one of my 
big brush markers and doing the lips on some of these, but really, I've covered up a lot of the lips. Got the eyes though. Maybe if I take a fine point of those, one in black. Yeah, I don't really have a fine tip though, so let me grab one of my glass pens. And I'm thinking of sort of enhancing the eyes that we can see. So, which pen would do this best? Got this mono twin. Let's go try and see. Here, but I kind of like the idea of doing only one eye. I've got an eyebrow up here too. I wonder if I take uh, the black Faber-Castell artist pen, pit pen, because you can blend these in a bit. And just, just add a little color there. I just take my finger. No, I don't know if I like that. No, leave that. Leave that alone. I don't like that. That's enough. Okay, doodling. I'm not a good doodler. So, did I doodle on his head? Doodle at some of his teeth. Got these girls, should I leave them all white? Should I add a little bit? Let's see, Let, let's, add, let's add a little blush. Should add more color to this one in the center. Okay, this might wreck it. I'm going to do this off camera and we'll see what happens. So, off camera, I did a little bit of doodling. I just took my white Signa, Signa ball pen, Uniball pen, and just went around the star and around the, uh, around the skull just to make them stand out a little bit. And I added some color to each of these. Um, textured paste stencil pieces a little bit kind of tarted them up a little bit you might say and the last thing it says to finish with a white border and off camera it's experimenting with various things white is a very difficult color um, when it comes to ink stamp pads which is what I would have preferred to use around the border but and nothing is working very well with that so I'm going to use a little bit of white acrylic paint and I'm going to use clean uh, ink applicator and I'm just going to dab it in and dab it off and let's go around. This seems to be working okay.
bit more. I think it needs a little bit more over here. First, I didn't think I would want to do that, but um, now I'm thinking, yeah, I kind of like it a little thicker. It makes it stand out a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to clean up here, give it a blast with the heat gun, and then it'll return. So I'm all done this uh, challenge and you may notice that this is laying a lot flatter than it was in the last part of the video. Um, these pages I have made for my round uh, journal and they tend to be a little bit um, less uh, thick than a journal book. So they will curl if you're using a lot of wet medium on them. So I have a little trick to flatten them out. I have a wide format laminator and what I do is I put this between two pieces of parchment paper and into the carrier and I run it at the highest setting on the laminator and I run it through and it flattens it right down. Kind of acts like a pressing machine. So if you've got a laminator, you can give that a try. Just make sure all of your mediums are dry before you do it or you're going to run into problems. Anyways, there's Mission Inspiration September Challenge done in the first part of October because I'm a little bit behind. So now I have this one out of the way and I'm, I'm kind of liking it. It's a little different for me. And there goes my clock. What would be one of my YouTube videos without my clock going off in the background? Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.